Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. Today is Tuesday, March 8th, 2022. It's 9.20 a.m. We're about 10 minutes away from the stock market opening, and there is a lot going on in the world today. Taking a look at the live precious metals prices over at kitco.com right now, and as you can see, metals are up across the board. Silver back up well over 26 bucks, gold over 2,000. And that's not all. That's really not even the crazy news today. As significant as that is, there is a lot more going on in markets. And we're going to get to that here in just a moment. Now, let's take a look at stock futures. Looks like we're going to have a mixed open. S&P up slightly, Dow up slightly, NASDAQ down just a little bit. Now, as you can see here, crude oil up significantly. Like I mentioned just a moment ago, gold well up over the $2,000 level. Silver 2665 moving up very nicely before the open here. And the craziest thing of all, really, uh, in terms of metal prices, that's going to make the move in gold and silver look like nothing by comparison, really, is nickel. Here's a headline we got today LME suspends nickel trading, cancels trades after prices double to over $100,000. Now that's per ton. And that would put you at a per pound price of about $50 per pound. And let's take a look at this chart from tradingeconomics.com. And this is a long-term chart of the price of nickel, a 25-year chart. Now, the previous all-time high was back in 2007. And that was just over $50,000 a ton. So in the trading session between today and yesterday, we have seen the price go from slightly over 25,000 all the way up to here it shows 80,000. And you saw from that headline that it actually touched 100,000 on the LME. So that is an enormous move up in nickel, uh, almost a 4X move overnight in the price of that metal. And that is on a significant short squeeze. Shorts are being forced to cover here. There was a big spike up in the price because of the sanctions against Russia. Russia is a big supplier of nickel. And so that triggered a short squeeze. So now trading in nickel has been halted on the LME. And I guess we're going to have to wait and see what that means. You know, when this reopens, we might see a gap up well above $100,000 per ton. Who knows, but certainly a significant development. Nickel, of course, is a very important industrial metal. It's used in the production of stainless steel. It's also a critical component in electric vehicle batteries. So certainly a very important commodity and one now that it looks like is going to be a lot more expensive to get your hands on. Now, it's not just nickel that we have to worry about spiking up, though, it looks like. Uh, we've got this headline today from CNBC. U.S. expected to announce a ban on Russian oil as soon as today. So this is an article that came out just a little less than an hour ago. Now the U.S. is talking about banning the import of Russian oil. Now that could have very, very considerable consequences for the price of crude oil moving forward, the price of energy, and also for the broader economy as a whole, because of course energy prices play a tremendous role in determining the price of many other goods and services. And we'll take a look just at a little bit of what this article says. The White House updated President Joe Biden's schedule for the day to include an announcement of additional steps the U.S. will take to hold Russia accountable for its unprovoked and unjustified war on Ukraine. And Biden will be delivering those remarks from the White House at 10.45 a.m. So, yeah, it certainly is about to be a very interesting day in markets, I would say. Keep an eye out for that announcement at 1045 because we may see some big moves in energy one way or the other around that time, depending on what Biden says. Now, it's not just Biden that is ratcheting up the rhetoric. Here's another headline from CNBC. Russia warns of $300 oil threatens to cut off European gas if West bans energy imports. Yeah, so uh, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak, he said on Monday in an address on state television, quote, it is absolutely clear that a rejection of Russian oil would lead to catastrophic consequences for the global market. And then another quote, uh, the surge in prices would be unpredictable. It would be $300 per barrel, if not more. And yeah, I don't think that he's incorrect. Certainly, I think that $300 is something that is well within the realm of possibilities for the price for a barrel of oil. 
And I mean, who knows how high it could go if we get some kind of a short squeeze or a supply crunch or a significant escalation in this conflict over in Eastern Europe in a short period of time. I think that we could see oil spike much higher. And I feel like in the West, there is a feeling of immunity to this economic warfare. I've seen people celebrating that the Russian economy is collapsing. And, you know, I don't really think that's anything to be celebrated. To the extent that these sanctions can bring an end to this conflict sooner, I, I think they are good. But to the extent that they make life difficult for the average Russian person who are, you know, really just people like you and me, and very likely they may not support the war that their government is engaged in, and they've just seen their currency collapse and price of a lot of goods move up in a big way. So, you know, there's a lot of economic hardship for the Russian people at the moment. I don't think that's anything to be celebrated. And I also think that many in the West feel this uh, sense of immunity that this economic warfare and these sanctions are not going to affect us. I think that that is a mistake to believe that. I think that we are actually extremely susceptible to the effects of this economic warfare that is ongoing. And if we see oil move up to $300, there's going to be a huge recession in the U.S. unless the Fed just unleashes massive amounts of liquidity because at $300 oil, many Americans and people in the West in general will have to cut spending on all sorts of other things just to be able to afford the necessities of life, you know, to be able to heat their home, to put gas in their car. Those things are going to become a much larger portion of the average Americans and the average Westerners budget. And so discretionary spending on just about anything else is going to be slashed significantly. And that is the sort of thing that can trigger a massive recession. Certainly, I don't think that the Fed or the establishment in the West wants to see that. And so this really could be the beginning of a massive financial crisis, of a dollar crisis, of a huge spike up in energy prices and a huge spike up in commodities. The consequences of this could be very far reaching. So this is not something to take lightly. You know, you guys, you want to make sure you're getting prepared and silver and tangible assets like silver and gold are certainly an important way to do that. You know, there's more to it than that as well. Make sure you guys are stocking up on some fuel. Make sure you guys are getting some food on hand, you know, just in case, just, just do what you can to get ready because things are about to get very unpredictable, I think. And, you know, it's not just this $300 oil thing. Russia has been very bellicose, of course, over the past weeks and one of the things they're warning about now is a global collapse, uh, kind of a vague warning from the Russian foreign ministry, but they've been quoted as saying that arming Ukraine with weapons, which of course is something that is ongoing, could trigger a global collapse. Now, does that mean that they're going to spike energy prices and that will be the cause of the collapse? Possibly. Like I said, it's kind of a vague warning. So who knows what that could mean or how that should be interpreted. Maybe it's a veiled threat of a cyber attack that could bring the world economy to the knees. Maybe it's worse than that. You know, maybe they're talking about lobbing a few nuclear weapons around. It's kind of hard to say at this point what the Russians are willing to do, what level they're willing to take this to. And things are escalating slowly but surely. So, you know, like I said, we all just need to make sure that we are getting prepared for tough times as best we can. If things don't escalate, if diplomacy wins out, well, that's great. But in a situation like this, you really need to be preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, I think. So I hope all of you are doing that. You know, it's not just oil, like I was mentioning. Here's an article from Time today. Shoppers scramble for staples as the food fallout from the war in Ukraine spreads around the world. And Ukraine and Russia together, I believe they make about a quarter of the world's wheat supply. So a huge, huge source of grain that is now off of the market. And, you know, it's not just Time reporting on this. It's a real thing. This is a 20-year chart of the price of wheat from macrotrends.net. And you can see that right now we are seeing a massive massive spike up in a very short period of time with the onset of this conflict in Eastern Europe. And we're taking out a previous high from 2008. It looks like the price of wheat got up to about 12 bucks. Well, now we are approaching the $13 level. So record high prices in wheat. And this can have all sorts of implications around the world. You know, one thing I'll draw your attention to on this chart is Back in 2010, 
we saw a pretty big spike up in a short period of time. In June of 2010, the price of wheat was about $4.59. And then if we move to December of 2010, we can see the price increase to almost $8. So that's a pretty significant spike up. And one of the things that was going on around this time, if you guys recall, was the Arab Spring. And the Arab Spring, you know, was a series of uprising and rebellions that spread across the Arab world. A couple of countries got their leaders deposed and new governments installed. There are a lot of analysts who believe that one of the factors contributing to the Arab Spring was that spike up in the price of wheat. So moving forward, we may begin to see additional civil unrest at home and around the world as these uh, food prices continue to move up. So yeah, guys, very crazy time in the world. There's a lot of uncertainty right now, a lot of uncertainty in markets. And that means that a good thing to do is to take some money out of the financial system Get your hands on some physical wealth, some physical gold, some physical silver, uh, maybe some nickels. You know, I did a couple videos uh, over the past several days about the price of nickel, and I mean, it has continued to accelerate that squeeze in the price of nickel. I mentioned yesterday I went to the bank and tried to pick up some nickel coins and they would only sell me a couple of rolls. I was able to get five rolls from them and they're rationing the coins. If you've got some extra cash, maybe head up your bank today, see if you can get some nickels because I have a feeling that they are going to be in short supply and probably won't be circulating anymore. So, you know, to whatever extent you can, get some cash out of the bank. Also, you know, they're having bank runs over in Russia right now and to think that we are immune from that kind of a problem in the West, I think is a little foolhardy. I think that this is still just kind of getting started and the consequences of all of this uncertainty and all of this conflict and this economic warfare are still going to be playing out for some time. So couldn't be a better time to get your hands on some physical wealth. Silver still at 26 bucks, uh, super cheap. I will still be stacking at these prices and I hope you guys will too. And if you guys have been watching the channel for a while and you'd like to support the channel, you can go over to the Smart Silver Stacker YouTube page now and there's a store tab and we've got some sweet silver stacking merch over there. We've got this I'd rather be stacking sticker you can pick up. So if you want to spread the word about silver and fiat currency and hard money, if you're one of those apes over at the Wall Street Silver subreddit and you want some stuff to you know, spread the word about stacking, then you could pick up a couple of these. Anyway, this is just kind of a funny design I put together. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below. I've never had merch before, but I figured, hey, why not throw some stuff up so if anybody wants to support the channel, they can pick up a couple of items. And if you guys like this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I appreciate all of you watching. I appreciate all of the support tremendously. I hope you guys stay safe. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys next time. Smart Silver Stacker, out.